So, a few days ago, I showed you some of the cool new features of the latest Android 16 Beta 1 update and even gave you a sneak peek of what's gonna look like in the reality. But, here's the twist. That wasn't a Pixel device, it was actually this POCO X4 Pro. And now you might be thinking that how did I even manage to run a Pixel ROM on a POCO device? Well, it's all thanks to something called a GSI and if you are wondering what's a GSI, don't worry, I'll explain everything in this video and even show you exactly how to flash it on any Android device. So make sure to watch the video till the end and if you are new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button right now and anyways, without wasting any time, let's start the video. So firstly, understand what a GSI is. So it stands for Generic System Image and it basically contains the Android OS. Now every other Android device has multiple partitions like system, vendor and so on. Like if you have ever flashed a custom recovery, you might have used this command like fastboot flash recovery recovery image, which means that you are replacing the recovery partition with a new image. And in the same way, when you are flashing a GSI, you are replacing the system partition with the new GSI or the generic system image. But here's the important part. It doesn't touch the vendor partition which contains the device specific files or blobs that are necessary for your hardware like camera sensors, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to function correctly. So even if you are installing a different OS, it works without compatibility issues because the hardware related files are still from the original vendor. So, for the first step, your device bootloader must be unlocked. Yes, it's mandatory if you want to flash a GSI on your device. So, if you haven't unlocked your bootloader, you will get a lot of videos regarding that on YouTube. So, make sure to check it out if you want to flash GSIs. Now, before we move further, make sure you are on the stock ROM or the official software your phone came up with. Like for Xiaomi, it's MIUI or HyperOS. For Realme, it's Realme UI and for OnePlus devices, it's Oxygen OS. And I'm currently on HyperOS, which is Xiaomi Stock Room. And if you ask me why, well, custom rooms often change important device files, which might cause booting failures for the GSIs. So it's strongly recommended to stay on your official Stock Room along with the Stock Recovery. Now for the second step, check if your device supports Project Treble, cause this is mandatory for GSI compatibility. To check this, just install this app called Treble Info. I'll leave the link in the description. So open the app and it will tell you if your device supports Project Treble. Apart from that, you also need to check whether your device uses dynamic partition or not. For example, my Poco X4 Pro does use dynamic partition, which is why it shows up as supported. Now, if your device doesn't suppose dynamic partition, it will simply show unsupported and you don't need to worry about it, just know what type of partition your device uses because the flashing commands will differ as per the partition type. Now for the third step, look for the GSI you want to flash. Now if you ask my recommendation, then I'll suggest Mystic GSIs. They upload stable GSIs only after they are tested properly and the GSI which I used in Android 16 video was also ported by their team. But while you are selecting the GSIs, you will need to notice the architecture. Most of the GSIs are universally compatible with both 32 and 64 bit, but you might notice that some of the GSI mentions 64 bit only. Like this HyperOS GSI and this Pixel GSI right here, they mention 64 bit on their post. Now, if you ask me, then I would recommend you to flash GSIs which are universally compatible because this POCO X4 Pro does support 64 bit. But even after flashing some 64-bit GSIs, it got stuck on boot loop. So make sure to check the GSI architecture before you flash them. And for this video, I'll be flashing the Pixel 16 GSI because they are the most stable GSIs and boot most of the time. Now let's move over to the PC and handle the rest of the stuffs from there. Now once you have moved into the PC, the first thing we will do is extract the system image from the GSI file. A few inches later. Once it's done, you will need to download these two files, the ADB setup and the platform tools. So don't worry, I'll give all the links in the description, so make sure to download it. So firstly, you will need to extract the platform tools folder. And once it's done, you will need to install the ADB setup like the way I'm showing.
And once it's installed, we will open the platform tools folder and tap on this storage path and type cmd, which will open the command prompt. But before we jump into flashing, you will need the VV Meta image of your own device. And you can't use the VV Meta image from some other phone, else the GSI will boot loop. And if you are not sure how to extract image files from a ROM, don't worry, I have already made a dedicated video on that. So make sure to check it out from the i button or the description. Now moving back to our phone, the first thing we will do is enable USB debugging from the developer options. Now if you are using a Xiaomi device, then you can just ignore the stupid pop-up. And once it's done, we will connect our phone to the PC. Moving back to the PC, firstly we will need to check the ADB status of our device using this command, ADB devices. And now a pop-up regarding ADB appears. So just allow it and as you can see in the command prompt, it shows our device code in the list of devices attached. Now we will boot our phone into the fast boot mode using ADB reboot boot loader and then press enter. Once our phone has booted into fast boot, we will use another command fast boot reboot fast boot which will reboot our phone into the fast boot D mode. Once it's done, now we will flash all the files one by one. So make sure to watch everything carefully from this part. So firstly, you will need to use this command so just copy it to this part and now after you paste it leaving a space drag the stock VB meta image of your phone and I'm telling you again that you must use your device specific VB meta image only. So once you have done flashing the VB meta image the next command is fastboot erase system which basically erases the system partition data. Now after this command there's a bit of twist. Now you will need to perform the commands as per your device partition as I already told you before. So if your device has dynamic partition then you need to perform this command. Now if your device doesn't support dynamic partition then you can skip these two commands. So as I already told you make sure to check them out from the treble info app. Now for the main part which is flashing the GSI use this command fast boot flash system then leaving a space drag the system dot image we extracted from the GSI zip. Now once we press enter it starts flashing without any problem. But if you face this issue regarding the partition size then just use all this commands and then reflash the GSI. So now let's wait till it completes the flashing process. A few inches later. So once the GSI has flashed, we will use one more command fastboot erase user data. Now after it's done, just reboot your phone using fastboot reboot. So now let's wait until it boots successfully. And just like that, we have successfully booted the GSI. Now you might notice this weird notch or cutout on the screen, but don't worry, it's not a bug. You can easily disable it from the display cutout settings in the developer options. Now once we skip through the setup, you will see the home screen is up and running and overall everything looks and works perfectly fine. So yes, that's how you flash GSI on pretty much any compatible device. And if you found this video helpful, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and share it with your friends who might want to try this out. And I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, goodbye and take care.